In this video, we visit Frayed Knot Farm to install an extender pipe and guide pipe combination for the roll-up side system. Eventually, we're going to be installing an automated roll-up side system here at this farm, but to keep this video short, we're going to focus just on the extender pipe and guide pipe combination. And this really makes the most sense because extender pipes can be used with either manual or automated gearbox systems. An extender pipe's purpose is to bump out the top of your guide pipe so that when your gearbox or automated gearbox roll-up side operator goes up and down on that guide pipe, it doesn't kick out at its bottom as it rolls up and down. This makes a straighter guide pipe. And if you need to use the space right next to your high tunnel, an extender pipe and guide pipe combination it might be exactly what you need to prevent your guide pipe at the bottom from kicking out and getting in the way of your walkways. Here's the material you need to set up an extender pipe and guide pipe system. You'll need square tube for your extender pipe, and really the length of the square tubing will depend on your end wall, which we'll get into more later. You'll need hardware to attach the extender pipe to your structure and we're gonna use two carriage bolts per extender pipe. Ours are 5 16th inch diameter and long enough to go through a two inch square tube and two inch diameter steel tube hoops. We're gonna use washers and nuts as well. Greenhouse plastic repair tape is helpful to have. The gearbox operator you'll have for your roll up sides, in our case, they're auto roller motors. You'll also need a guide pipe and guide pipe hardware. In our case, this is 1.315 inch or one and three eight inch galvanized steel tubing and also the hardware that comes with it which includes these chain links and the bolt to attach it as well as an open eye hook which goes through the extender pipe and ultimately is what your guide pipe hangs on. If you need to pick up any of these building materials I'll have direct links to where you can find these products in the video description. Before I get into showing you how let's just take a quick look at an extender pipe setup. We got the 5 16th inch diameter bolts going through an end wall member you can see there's another one going through the end bow and you'll need two of these two points of contact um, for permanent attachment you have your open eye hook going through about one inch from the end on the extender pipe your guide pipe is hanging off of that as you can see here it's you know shooting straight down from that open eye hook you know pretty much so it's going straight down to the gearbox operator or in our case it's a auto roll-up side operator and here are the tools needed to install an extender pipe a drill driver with a 5 16th inch and 3 8 inch drill bit an impact driver or a socket wrench with a 1 half inch socket a crescent wrench a permanent marker a reciprocating saw a square and a metal file now that we know what we're aiming to make we can rough in our first extender pipe and when we rough this in we're aiming for a few things we're going to make sure the extender pipe passes over two firm points of contact on our end wall, in our case, a horizontal member and the bow itself. We also need to make sure that the top end of our extender pipe is directly above where our roll bar will be. And I also like to have the top part of our extender pipe about 12 inches above where the plastic attaches to the hip rail. So here you can see I'm gonna measure up 12 inches from the, the spring wire channel that is holding that roll up side in place. Once I've measured 12 inches up from where the plastic attaches to the hip rail, I'm going to rough in this extender pipe again. And this time I'm gonna make some marks. First, I'm taking note at where that open eye hook will be when I hang my guide pipe from it. I know that the topmost hole that will go through this extender pipe will be about an inch from its end. It needs to be right in line with my roll bar. And where that hole is gonna be located, I'm trying to eyeball to line that up with that 12 inch mark. When you like where your extender pipe is located, take your marker and mark on both sides of your extender pipe where it crosses over the members you'll be bolting it to. So in our case, this horizontal member and the bow itself. We're making these marks so we know exactly where this pipe is gonna go up after we drill the holes in it. We're also making dots in the middle of the square tubing, right where it passes the horizontal member. This will ultimately get a hole and a bolt. And we're making a dot in the extender pipe where it passes the bow. This is also where a hole will be drilled so the extender pipe can bolt directly to the bow. I also make a third mark one inch in from the top end of our extender pipe. This is where the open eye hook will go. I'm now ready to drill the holes through the extender pipe and I pull it away from the plastic. You can see I'm left with the lines I made with marker, so I'll easily be able to put the extender pipe back where I previously had it once my holes are drilled. It's a little hard to see because of the rain, but I have three dots on this extender pipe and I'm gonna take a square and I'm gonna line it up with the dots I roughed in on that two inch square tubing to make sure that it's in the middle of the tube. One inch in, I'm making that dot a little bit easier to see. Now I'm just actually gonna pre-drill these with a tech screw. You don't have to do this. 
I like to do this because I find it makes a more accurate hole when I finally drill through with the drill bit. So I'm just using a self-tapping screw to start the hole. I'm now going to use the square to trace around the edges of this extender pipe to make dots on the other side so that I know where I want to have my holes. I'm doing this to be very precise. I want these holes to go straight through this square tubing. I don't want them to go through at an angle, and this is why I'm using the square, to be more accurate. Whatever distance the holes I've already made are from the edge of the square tubing, that's going to be the same distance away from the edge of the square tubing I make my holes on the opposite side. That's another way the square is going to help me here. Once I'm confident in where I've made my mark, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill this with a tech screw. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just my own personal choice. And I'm going to repeat this wherever I need a hole, using the square, making a mark, and pre-drilling with a tech screw. Now we're going to drill through the extender pipe. Where the pipe bolts to our end wall and our end bow, it needs to have a 5 16 inch diameter hole. Where we're going to have our open eye hook, that's going to be a 3 8 inch diameter hole. I'm going to do a quick bolt test where I drill those holes to see if the bolt will fit through. And it does, but the carriage bolt has a little square on it, so we're going to use a unibit to open that up a little bit more. And these unibits, or step bits as they're called, work great if you need to open up a hole just a little bit more. Then I test my open eye bolt location, it fits, and we're good to proceed. I like to put my open eye bolt on first, so you can see I have a nut threaded all the way uh, near the open eye bolt there in a washer. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other uh, side of this extender pipe. I'm going to put a washer and a nut. And this will keep it in place. And I like to put this on uh, in advance just so it's all ready to go. Now we can take the extender pipe back up there. And the open eye bolt will be in a straight line with the roll bar. And that both the holes we pre-drilled line up with the steel members behind them. I use the holes as a guide in a 5 16 inch drill bit to literally put a little scratch in the plastic itself so I know where to drill my holes through the end wall members. I pull it away and make sure that my marks have been made on the plastic. There's one more step I like to take before drilling these holes. I'm going to clean where these holes will be drilled in the plastic. Then I'm going to add some greenhouse plastic repair tape where I'm going to drill these holes. This helps further protect the plastic. I add the tape at both points I'm going to be drilling through. I take it a step further on this horizontal member and I also put a piece of plastic repair tape on the interior of the plastic. This double protects the plastic when I'm drilling through it. Just like I did on the extender pipe, I'm going to use a 5 16 inch dry by 3 quarter inch long self-tapping tech screw to pre-drill these holes. I find that this is particularly useful when I'm drilling through with the end bow. Because it's round, drill bits tend to have a harder time to go through smoothly. And since I'm drilling through plastic, I want to be extra careful that I get right on the hole. Now I'm going to take my 5 16 inch drill bit and go right through the hole I pre-drilled in my horizontal member. I'm going to push right through the backside of this square tubing as well. I then give it a little back and forth to clean that hole out and I'm ready to move on. And I'm going to repeat that process where my hole goes through the end bow as well. Having that pre-drilled hole really helps with the round hoop. And then I push straight through to the other side all the way. After cleaning the hole out, let's take a look. We have our two holes. They go all the way through cleanly. Now I rough my extender pipe back in. Line up the holes in my extender pipe with the holes in my end wall framing. I notice my extender pipe is pretty long. And I decide I'm going to cut it right up here. That will help prevent potential wind damage where it protrudes down into the face of that end wall poly. So I made a mark. I clamp it to a table. And I cut it with a reciprocating saw. And then I use a metal file to clean it up. This size makes much more sense for our specific structure here. But seeing where the bottom part of that extender pipe will hit, I decide to add an additional piece of poly repair tape just to protect the plastic right there. Now we're finally able to mount the extender pipe to the structure. I'm going to start by pushing through the 5 16 inch diameter carriage bolts. Then I'm going to line the ends of those bolts up with the holes that we have in our end wall. The hole in our horizontal member and the hole in our end hoop. Once I have the bolts lining up with those, I thread them through and push them through the end wall and then go onto the interior of the structure where I throw a washer and nut onto the end of those bolts. And these nuts here require a 1 half inch drive, so we're using an impact driver to tighten them down. Once the extender pipe is in place, we're now ready to mount our guide pipe. And you can see here, our guide pipe, it's a little long. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up as we want it to be installed, and this will tell us how much we need to cut off of the guide pipe. So we're going to have it go straight up and down from that open eye hook, and I'm going to make a mark with marker just underneath the open eye bolt that's attached to the extender pipe. And here's a close-up of what that mark looks like. And there's also a couple inches of chain, so I'm also going to add a few inches to that mark when I eventually make my cut. Here I am measuring off the end opposite of the chain links. I'm making my mark. 
cutting with a reciprocating saw, and then taking the guide pipe back up to the extender pipe, putting it back on the open eye hook, and seeing how it hangs. You want it to hang freely just like that, you can give it a little jiggle to test it out. And this is what your extender pipe and guide pipe combination will look like. Your extender pipe attached to your end wall, the guide pipe hanging straight down, and you can see our roll bar is already in place with the anti-billow rope. That is only because we're upgrading this structure from a manual operated roll up to an auto operated roll up. So I decided to just leave the roll bar in place to reduce the amount of work I have when doing that. And I will show how I splice in an auto roll up motor onto this roll up side in a future video. But if we had installed this as a part of a normally progressing high tunnel or greenhouse installation, we could use the location of the bottom of this guide pipe to determine where our roll up operator on the roll bar needs to be to go up and down. And that's how our extender pipe and guide pipe combination are installed and in line with the roll up side operator. If you need any parts and materials, gearboxes, auto roll up side hardware, anything like that, I'll have links to where you can find those products in the description. If this video helped you, consider subscribing to our channel. And thanks for watching.